In this video today, I'm gonna to show you the three most common types of hip pinching or impingement and how you can finally start to get some long-term relief from issues in that area. Now, not all hip pinching or impingement is created the same, but when I refer to this hip pinching, I'm referring to the femur getting blocked within its ability to rotate within the acetabulum, which is the hip socket. And therefore, you're going to get some sort of contact of the femur on the rim of the acetabulum that we do not want. This can be manifested or felt as a pinch on the front side of the hip in the hip flexor area and or that sort of bone on bone uncomfortable sensation in the deeper part of the hip, especially when we go into hip flexion and or hip internal or external rotation. Now there's two main types of impingement that I'm gonna be talking about, depending on whether it's the side you're shifted towards or away from. And then I'll get into another consideration that will be important for both cases and is quite common. If you've ever seen any of my content in the past, then you know I'm a huge believer in that not all issues are created the same on both sides of the body. Now it's first important to know which side of your body are you more shifted towards or lateralized towards. And I would highly recommend, strongly recommend, you don't go off of what you believe in your visual appearance or intuition. Go off of what your objective measurements are going to tell you because that's going to give you an indication of what movement limitations you have on your body. And there are very specific limitations that are associated with either the side that's higher and you're more shifted into or lower and more externally rotated. And we're gonna get into that right now. I'm going to show you five overall basic tests. And because that's an odd number, that means that you're going to check the boxes of at least three out of five on one side. So if you have three or more things that match up with you being shifted over to that side, that's the side I want you to go with. The first one is an active straight leg raise. Whichever side is better with you keeping a perfectly straight and locked out knee going nice and slow up until the other leg starts to move or you hit some uncomfortable stretch or sensation, the side that's better is going to be more internally rotated. So that is one indication, if you have a better straight leg raise, that you're more lateralized towards that side. Hip flexion is a measurement of external rotation. So same thing, pull the knee back to the chest in a very slow, straight line. And once you feel like the knee has to deviate off to the side in any capacity, or your other leg starts to move, or you feel a pinch in your hip, that would be the end of that test. And whichever side is better is usually the side you are shifted away from, and that would be your lower, more externally rotated side. We're also going to use the basic hip internal and external rotation test. So just sit in a 90-90 position, make sure you're feeling your sit bones on both sides, and then rotate your leg out for internal rotation and in for external rotation, making sure that you're not twisting your pelvis in any way whatsoever. Keep your hips perfectly straight ahead. The side that you're shifted towards will have better internal rotation, the side you're shifted away from, better external rotation. And now we're gonna need a tiebreaker. And what we're gonna use for this is shoulder abduction, because this is a representation of how well you can turn towards one side. So if I have better shoulder abduction on the right side, that's because I can actually turn more so towards that side of my trunk. And I would be limited in left abduction. So whichever side has better shoulder abduction, meaning you start right here, keeping your palm perfectly neutral, and you're gonna slowly go off to the side until you feel like you have to twist your upper or lower body in any way, meaning that it's no longer just your arm, which is the thing that's moving, that is the end of the test. Okay, now that we have that, we can understand how three different types of impingement can happen depending on which side of the body we're going to be leaning towards or lateralized towards. For most people, they're going to be lateralized towards the right side. And this is because we have natural underlying human asymmetry, which biases us towards the right side. I discussed this more in a video where I talk about the left AIC pattern, which I will link down below. Okay, this first type of impingement that we have is going to be anterior, meaning forward, and superior, which means high within the acetabulum. This is going to be on the side most often, which is going to be more lower and externally rotated. So this is the side we are shifted away from. Now the reason for this is because when we are more externally rotated and forward on that side, what tends to happen is because the pelvis is literally just more forward and anteriorly tipped on that side, we have the femur slide out into external rotation. So we're here. Now because the femur is slid forward within the hip socket, it's 
in that externally rotated position. But when we start to raise that leg up, or we go and or, we go into an internally rotated position of the hip and try to access that space, we're going to run into a block on that anterior and superior rim of the acetabulum right here. So as we bring this leg up, we're gonna hit right here. Ooh, that's not gonna feel too good. And we're gonna have to compensate to work around that impingement. Now, what we need to do to address this is get the pelvis to be pulled back on that side and promote more internal rotation of the femur to promote a more neutral resting position of this side of the pelvis right here. And there's a couple of exercises we can do to help assist with that. Now I'm gonna be showing you one exercise per type of impingement to keep this video condensed and also digestible. But if you want more information and more exercises for each type of impingement I'm gonna be talking about, check out the article I'm writing alongside this, which I will link down below in the description. It's gonna have a lot more helpful exercises for each type there. All right, now for this one, what you're gonna need is something around or just below waist height, a little ball or some sort of an object like a towel rolled up, thick enough to where when you put it in between your thighs, you can still keep your hips in line with your toes and your knees in line with your toes and your hips. And you're also gonna need a book about this thick, but what you're gonna do is place the side we're working on, that would be the left side for me, which is the more forward and externally rotated side, place that foot on the book. The book needs to be big enough so that way your whole foot can remain flat. And then you're gonna place that other foot just a half step in front of the other one. So that way the toes of the back leg are in line with the midfoot of the front leg. Take that ball, put it just above your knees and between your legs, bend both knees, and now put your hands on your hips and just shift back a little bit. You're going to hit a point where you feel a little stretch in the back of your hip right here. It's not hugely significant, it's just a bit. So bend both knees, find that stretch back there just a little bit. You should never feel any pinching in the front of your hip, what you will feel is a little bit of your inner thigh adductor muscle kick on right here. And that's good because that muscle is helping secure your femur in the back of the hip socket. So I'm here leaning back a little bit. You can support your body weight now and just start to breathe into that position in through your nose, out through your mouth. You might want to play around with a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt to help keep your back relaxed and feel that stretch a little bit more. Throughout this, you wanna keep your weight mostly in the heel on the back foot, but both feet are relaxed and they're flat. As you get better at this, you can start to oscillate back and forth like this with the ball, that's what it's there for. So you can start to push one knee forward, pull the other back, and as you do that, you need to stay heavy on the heel of the back leg and you're really focusing on feeling that adductor inner thigh as you pull back and then relaxing and moving forward. And you can do that for about a minute or two. From there, you can start to place your hands on that and get a little bit deeper into it and do the same exact thing. Just make sure you never ever feel a pinch in the front of your hip because if you do, you went down too far. My Beginner Body Restoration Program takes all of these principles into account. And how can we use easy, basic exercises and progress them over a period of weeks to where we can effectively shift in and out of both sides of the hips? That's ultimately the goal and what helps people feel really good. If you wanna learn more, you can click the link down below. You'll know you're successful with this if you see improvements in your straight leg raise and your hip internal rotation, as well as shoulder abduction because those are representations of your ability to shift towards that side. Now, in terms of the side we're shifted towards, what we often see is pinching on the lower side of this acetabular rim right here. Now, this is because the femur is already in an internally rotated and adducted position. Now, if I were to go more into that, do you see how that could potentially have this femur hit right here because you can't really go somewhere you're trying to go if you're already there. Now, what you're going to see as a result of this is again, decreased external rotation measurements, such as your hip external rotation and your hip flexion. Now, what we wanna to do to improve this and create more space within the acetabulum is to promote more hip abduction and external rotation without the pelvis rolling around. Now, this can be a 
Now this can be accomplished with the muscle fibers on the backside of the pelvis of the glute max and also the gluteus medius, but more of the posterior fiber. Those are going to help you get that femur to move into more of an externally rotated position more effectively without a ton of compensation. Here's an exercise that's really good for that. The setup for this, we need to be in a left side lying position with a towel a couple inches thick underneath the lowest portion of the left ribs right here. And ideally we have something underneath the head so we're very passively side bent to the right, just very passively, but you can use a towel, yoga block, or you can support your head. But if you're supporting your head, just let your head relax. You don't wanna actively hold your neck up. That's not what we want at all. Okay, now we need to make sure we have a straight line from the right heel to the right hip to the right shoulder. And to initiate this, we're going to reach this leg that way. And we need to make sure that our hips stay neutral and tucked underneath us as we reach. And that's going to help us create some separation between the left abs and this towel roll right here. Or should at least at minimum help you feel those left abs engage. So we need the left abs on without arching the back, maintain that tuck. Now we should feel left abs and as we roll the right hip forward very slightly to square up the hips with the wall in front of us, we need to turn the toes up as far as we can get them without the right hip rolling back at all. If the right hip rolls back to any extent, we have gone too far. So for Trevor, that's right about there. As he does that, he should feel his right lower butt cheek, glute max and outside hip where the glute meat is engaged. And for some people, we're just gonna have you sit here, hang out and breathe. If it helps you, put your hand on the ground and you can push to get those left abs a little bit more. Now the progression from this is going to be, can you lift the right foot up without the right hip rolling back to any extent? It's gotta stay forward. That should help you feel way more glute max on the right side. Your left abs need to stay engaged and your hips need to stay tucked as you do that. Common mistake is people are gonna engage their neck. So because their head is supported, people have a tendency to really crank their neck to one side or the other and use that to lift the leg, make sure the neck stays relaxed. The other thing we're gonna see is people are gonna shrug the shoulder or roll it forward in an attempt to keep the right hip forward. But don't do that, make sure that the shoulder stays out of the ear. The last thing is that we need to make sure that the toes stay up and they don't start to roll down. Again, if you can't get them all the way up too much, that's okay, just as much as you're capable of doing. Now this last one is really important to consider no matter what type of hip pinching you have because if you are forward on both sides of your pelvis, which a lot of people are, then you're going to be stuck in your ability to move into genuine hip flexion without hitting a blockage of some sort at some point because you're not going to be able to keep your pelvis in a neutral position to get that femur to fully externally rotate because when the pelvis is forward, it biases the femurs towards an internally rotated position, it can magnify either type of this impingement or slightly alter it, but the principles will be similar. Or what it can do is it can just create a situation where when you move into more hip flexion, you're gonna hit the top of the acetabulum. Now, these people are going to be limited in hip flexion and they're gonna feel a pinch, especially when they move into that hip flex position around 90 degrees. What we wanna do here is get the hamstrings to pull the pelvis back on both sides, get the pelvis in more of a neutral position and then we can move on from there. Usually doing something like I'm about to show you is a really good starting point for either of these people, especially people who can get pinching in both hips or they feel like hip flexion is what really lights them up. Set up for this, we're in this A-frame position with our feet flat on the ground, the whole foot flat on both sides. And we have a ball that allows our knees to stay in line with our toes and our hips. It's not too wide, shoving our knees out, not too narrow, getting our knees to cave in. It should be keeping it in line with both the hips and the knees. And then what we're gonna do is just place our hands on our low ribs and maintaining the whole foot flat, we're gonna focus on keeping the weight in the heels. So we don't want the toes to come up as a result of that, keep the whole foot flat. But think about trying to drag your heels towards your butt. They won't move, but the intention will get your pelvis to slightly lift off of the floor. So your low back stays flat, but your tailbone is slightly off of the floor and you should feel your hamstrings on both sides engage. And you're gonna hold that position as you breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, get all the air out until you feel a little bit of side ab engagement and then pause, close your mouth, tongue on the roof of your mouth, inhale through the nose and you're gonna feel your rib cage expand, keeping a little bit of that side ab tension when you inhale. 
If you're having a hard time finding your hamstrings, what you can do is place a couple of dumbbells in between your heels and your hips, and that'll allow you to drag back into some external object so you can find those hamstrings a little bit better. Another adjustment we may have you do is get a little bit more elevation so that we can put you in more of a passive posterior tilt of your pelvis. We wanna make sure the whole foot is flat on both sides and you're still focused on feeling those heels. Regardless of the type of impingement or pinching that you see here, I would recommend doing two sets of about five breaths of these exercises in both the morning and the evening or before you exercise and after you exercise. That'll allow your body to start to adapt and create longer lasting changes.